the system. We have to write an equation for that. I try to think in you now look at the direction of current in both the loops. Then you analyze the condition. I want to replace this with an equivalent coil. I want to replace this with an equivalent coil. So let the self inductance of this. I want to replace these two with a equivalent coil. Mutual inductance will be non zero because they are placed closed here. So now what is the direction of flux produced by this? I'll, I'll show nearby here only. B1. What about the flux B bar produced by this? So the B bar produced by this B2 will support B1. <coughs> flux getting added up or, or series aiding. It is called a series aiding because B1, B2 will be same direction here. So the flux of second coil will support the flux of first coil or the flux of first coil will support the flux of second coil. Let the EMF induced in this be E1, in this be E2. The resultant, let it be E. Then at what rate the current I change here at the same rate, I'm going to change current here. Together what they'll produce for same rate of change current, same EMF. If this coil also produces for the same rate of change of current, the same EMF, then shall I say, this is equivalent of these two. <coughs> Try to understand. I'll produce, I'll send a varying current. Then EMF induced in this loop is E1, here E2. Then resultant EMF is E1 plus E2. Then the same rate of change of current, the same rate of change of current, I'll pass through this coil, the same EMF is induced here. Then together what I can say now, what EMF induced, these two coils produce, the same EMF is produced by this. What are E1, E2? First of all, you should write E1, E2. So what is E1? I'll have water. Help of the if you're finding difficult, assume two loops of having self inductance L1, they have mutual inductance M1. Then, what is E1? E1, what you write just now? I concluded no, so this E1 we are going to write L di by dt minus m di by dt. The induced DMF such that it will oppose the cause, therefore, that negative sign. Similarly, what is E2? E2 should be. Uh, why I is same, the same wire, what happened is wound in such a way that the same current flows. Uh, are, are you able to look at, look at the structure? So what is E2? L, L2 DI by DT minus M DI by DT. And what is E equal to? E1 plus E2. So straight away. Uh, this I'll write it as minus of negative sign I'll take common minus di by dt l1 plus l2 plus 2m and looking at this diagram what is the you can write l di by dt So 
substituting two in one. L di by dt, it's a negative sign. <coughs> di by dt, L one plus L two plus two in. So comparing these two, so what is L is equal to L one plus L two plus two in. What is M? Mutual inductance between the coils. The direction of B one, B two is very important. You have to directly remember this formula. When two coils connected in series, and if the flux is supporting or the the current flows in such a way that the B bar in both the coils in same direction means, then you should take this as the effective self inductance of the coil. Okay. Similarly, next one. Now see the the same wire. It is owned on both the solenoids. Now the current will flow in such a way that the B bar in first one. Will be towards left, and the B bar in the second one will be towards right. So, what's happening to flux produced by one <coughs> will oppose the flux due to other one. This I should replace with an equivalent. So, let this be current. I did the self inductance. So what is EMF? This is E. Write down the equation. No? So this will be E one. We are going to write minus L L one di by dt plus m. I should write it. Because it will oppose, no. If you take this negative, this should be positive here. Similarly, what is E two? And what is E L di by T T equivalent? <coughs> so E is equal to E one plus C two. Minus of this one. So therefore, effective EM, EM induced inductance will be. So when they oppose minus two m, when they aid, when when they oppose, when they aid, it will be plus two m. When they oppose, it will be minus two m. So how do I come to know? You should look at the orientation. Orientation means solenoid will not have any polarity. The the way the turns the coil is wound on both the solenoids which are placed there that it matters. And what happens if this broad perpendicular? No mutual inductance will come. I think the discussion should not be there if the solenoids are oriented perpendicular. No mutual inductance. If they are inclined again, mutual inductance will come. Little bit complicated at our level. We can't analyze here. When axes are coaxial. Then we are able to discuss when they are perpendicular. Mutual inductance will be zero. Then fine. So if I connect like this, then it should be L one plus L two only. No mutual inductance will be there. Don't take perpendicular L one square plus L two square. It should be L one plus L two for this. They may trouble you with questions of like this. Huh? This is a soul night. Okay, this is about the series. So we'll take the next parallel condition. Uh, first, uh, what is that M? Mutual inductance depends on what. In books, they're given the mutual inductance depends upon again L one L two, where K is called as coefficient of coupling, and the K depends upon 
the orientation of the coils here. That's what the conclusion is made like this. So now I, I don't have time because I have to go for parallel. So tomorrow or any other time we'll discuss that one because not part of syllabus, coefficient of coupling. Just you should have a basic idea. The fraction of what is it is defined? The fraction of flux produced by one coil that links the other coil. That's called as a quotient of coupling. If the flux produced by one coil completely links the other coil, K will be one. It's a measure of it is a measure of flux linking one coil 